Questions to the Cabinet members will now be taken. Question number 12, Councillor Ambash. Question number 12 to the Cabinet member, please. Um, I thank the uh, member for the question. And I would just like to add, there are two ways of um, managing a workforce. One is to look at the good in people. And um, Dr. Owen Kahn was talking a moment ago about looking at the wonderful work some of our workers do. And the other is always looking for a negative um, when actually there are more positives to be seen. Um, I say no more, but I do think this is a pretty disgraceful question, bearing in mind the very good Ofsted uh, report and letter that we received. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Supplementary. Com Councillor Amber. Can I thank the Cabinet Please. Member for her answer? You know, it's easy for the Cabinet Member to avoid answering the question, either attacking the questioner or the messenger, or the question itself. I do and have acknowledged in public the progress made on, by the department, the children's department, in relation to the Austin Improvement Plan since February. But I do think it's important that she gives assurance that all the recent concerns raised in the Ofsted letter will be considered and incorporated within the latest iteration of the Ofsted Improvement Plan, if only to make sure that we keep improving on all the issues that we are less than perfect on. Will she give me that assurance? Um, <laughs> Uh, the member is well aware of um, uh, where we are on our improvement plan. He sits on the improvement board. None of us said it was going to be easy, and none of us have said that we've got there yet. Um, but what we would say is that we are further along the road than a, um, both Ofsted and the DfE would have expected at this time, and we've been congratulated by both of them for having got there. And I would have expected that the opposition thought about who this is all about. It's not about the officers, it's not about me, it's about the children. And Ofsted have reassured us in their letter that the children are now being well cared for and seen within time. Second okay. supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, would the Cabinet member agree with me again that um, uh, Councillor Ambash is, is better placed than most of us to know the details of what's been going on with the progress and everybody is perfectly conscious and aware that it is work in progress but a key part of the work that has been achieved so far is down to the hard work and the cultural attitude of the staff which is fundamental to the outcomes for the children as we all know and would the Cabinet member uh, join with me in passing on our thanks to those members of staff for the hard work they've done to get us where we are so far on this road which isn't complete yet but is well on the way, largely down to their efforts. Um, I thank the member for um, that supplementary. I'll just read for those that perhaps didn't have time to read the Ofsted letter, the final sentence. Um, from Ofsted, this is their summing up. The senior management team is focused and determined to take forward and embed improvement across its services. They are aware of the deficits and have effective plans in place to address the concerns. I don't think that it could be put in uh, better terms uh, than that. And I thank the member and certainly um, will pass on um, our thanks, gratitude for the tremendous hard work those the senior management and right the way through the organization the officers have put in to get us to where we are today. Question number 13, Councillor Hart. Um, question 13 of the Cabinet Member for Housing. Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Hart for his question. Uh, I, I think it's probably fair to say that a lot of the uh, Mayor's promises uh, were made when he was seeking the Labour nomination. Uh, and if Tessa Jowell said she would plant X number of trees, he would plant more. Uh, she was going to build X number of houses and he would build more. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, a lot of these promises, as we know, uh, are not going to achieve fruition. Uh, he has backtracked on a number of them, so the firm promise, which is still actually on, on his uh, manifesto website, uh, that on day one uh, he would be delivering 50% affordable housing, that is now uh, apparently an aspiration. Uh, that, that particular wording isn't mentioned anywhere in the manifesto, but perhaps he, he mentioned it verbally at some point. Um, as the uh, answer says, um, good luck to him with uh, getting the 35%. Um, he may not achieve that. Um, supplementary. Supplementary, Councillor Hart. 
and Mr. Cabinet Member, after just seven months into his mayoralty, the Mayor has lost all credibility um, with all of his broken promises that he made in election time. If it's housing, it's uh, rising fares, uh, to, to name but two. But even after a humiliating uh, bailout of 3.15 billion by the Chancellor of the Exchequer, does the Cabinet Member really believe that he will actually build his new target of 90,000 affordable homes in London? Um, Mr Mayor, I'd like to, to thank Councillor Hart for his supplementary. It was a little bit difficult to, to get some of it with because of all the barracking uh, over there, but I, I will do my best. Um, certainly, I think the, the Mayor will be very relieved uh, that uh, the Chancellor has uh, made this uh, unprecedented grant to London, um, with, I suppose, the caveat that the affordable housing target has actually been increased. So uh, the Mayor was uh, pledging uh, eventually to build 80,000. It is now 90,000. I very much hope, and I think we all very much hope, that he will be able to achieve that. Uh, and it will, of course, have to be done with the assistance of uh, others. Um, as some members may know, he's formed a housing for Londoners board. He has a very good member on that to advise him in the form of uh, our own leader here. Uh, the Deputy Mayor, James Murray, visited uh, the York Road Wynn Stanley estate recently, met the uh, leader and myself, and I think he was very impressed with all the various uh, schemes that we're bringing forward. Uh, I've also met with the Shadow uh, Secretary of State for Housing, uh, John Healy, on a couple of occasions, and he's also expressed great interest in, in what we we're doing. The only people that seem to be deriding everything we're doing, unfortunately, uh, are the members opposite. Second supplementary. Supplementary. Oh. That's a critical. Uh, a bit faulty. There you go. Leader did comment about more of something means less of something else. Well, we never, I never, ever, ever hear Wandsworth Council comment that perhaps we might get more affordable housing if we actually had a slightly tighter margin on our developers. We know this has been described as a council, as a property company with a council attached. My question is this is, when I learned to do sums at school, 35% actually that's currently available is a lot better than the average of, in fact, less than 25% social and affordable housing that's being uh, provided across the Wandsworth Nine Elms development. And I would say, would the Cabinet member not agree that Wandsworth residents who would like to live in their own homes and not have their homes yeah, houses built up I'm getting there. I remember Councillor Hart had a while to get to his point. <laughs> Lack of interruption. Um, what I was going to say is that we have 25, at maximum 25% at Nine Elms at the moment. Would the Cabinet member not agree that even an, an extra 10% affordable housing would be welcome news for the Wandsworth residents who wish to have their own homes, who do not wish to see their homes sold off to foreign investors and what will the council do in order to achieve this extra 10 percent? Um, Mr Mayor, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Critchard for her sort of roving question to both the leader and I and with the leader's permission I will reply uh, on his behalf as well. Uh, first of all, could I say I do welcome uh, Councillor Critchard's uh, uh, acknowledgement of the fact that the affordable housing to be provided in Vauxhall Nine Elms is 25%. Unfortunately, uh, that figure was misquoted in Parliament, I'm sure inadvertently, as 13%, and so I'm rather glad that Councillor Critchard has... Uh, that, Councillor, that is what we will be achieving. Uh, it's certainly not 13%. I'm not entirely sure where that particular figure came from that was mentioned in Parliament, uh, but I'm grateful to Councillor Critchard for confirming uh, its inaccuracy, and, and, and we hope we don't hear nonsense like that again. Well, we, we can certainly get another 10% of affordable housing in Vauxhall Nine Elms wouldn't be a problem at all. We could just cancel the tube line extension. We could, we could not build the school. We could forget the park. This is, a, this is a brownfield site which was highly contaminated. There was heavy industry there before. 
It is a hugely expensive site to develop. Um, to get 25%, I think most people would regard actually as quite an achievement. Clearly, whatever it is, if it's 25%, well, why isn't it 26? It's 26%, well, surely you could get 27. There are no pleasing some people, but the fact is that this is going to be one of the most exciting and vibrant new developments in the whole of London. It's the largest brownfield site in the whole of Europe. 16,000 new homes will be developed. Frankly, if foreigners want to buy them, so what? Let them. What is, what is the matter? What have you got against foreigners that you don't want them buying and investing in our borough? Apple is an American company. We're proud to have them. There will be other companies that follow. Do you want to ban those as well as people buying homes? What nonsense. Question number 14. <laughs> Councillor Jones. Question 14. To Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Jones for her question. First of all, because I think she's slightly got the wrong end of the stick on this one. Um, the decent home standard doesn't apply and never has applied to the private rented sector, and uh, either I or uh, housing officers will be more than happy to explain to her the reason for that. As I've said, I think what she is... Ref what what I think she, well, there, there are practical reasons for it. The, the reason the uh, decent home standard only applies to social rented homes, and I'm glad for, uh, to uh, uh, Councillor Gibbons for uh, giving me the uh, time to devote to this subject. I wasn't intending to, I was going to do it privately, but uh, he's keen that it shouldn't be. Uh, the reason for that is actually that social uh, providers uh, do actually do their own assessments, and Councillor Leone Cooper will know that well. She worked in that particular field. Uh, frankly, it is impossible to get private landlords to it without having vast armies of civil servants with clipboards going banging on the doors and insisting that they get the entry into every single private rented house uh, in the country. Frankly, that is not something I think even Stalin didn't think that was a good idea, but uh, maybe, maybe you do. Anyway, getting, getting back to uh, Councillor Jones's question, I, I, I admire her tenacity in wading back through two years of committee reports uh, to find this. Of course, what it was actually referring to was, uh, I think it was described as modelling, uh, in actual fact it's a guesstimate, because it is assumed uh, by the Great London Assembly that 30% um, of homes are... Uh, uh, private rentally homes uh, uh, do not meet the standards we would like them to. Uh, there's no evidence that that is the case uh, in Wandsworth. Uh, that would suppose that about 11,000 homes uh, would meet that, uh, not the 21,000 I think Councillor Jones was suggesting. Um, the figures for uh, uh, orders that have been imposed uh, are in the, uh, in the written answer, uh, so I won't dwell on those. Supplementary. Supplementary, Councillor Jones. Um, Thank you for your answer. You, you didn't actually mention the action day that you, uh, you wanted to say that you held in July. Um, I was very interested to read about that because that, that was actually uh, the, the two flats were, were flats that I reported to the housing department. So um, our action day is just when a councillor reports a problem. Um, could you tell me a bit more about what, what happened on the action day other than the report I made being investigated? And, uh, and also there were action days due in Gravely and Tooting, so have those happened yet and when are they to happen? Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Councillor Jones for her um, further question uh, and also to thank her for doing our officers' work for them. I'm sure they're very grateful for her assistance. Uh, action days, as I say in the uh, written answer, uh, are planned. I can't give the exact dates at the moment, but we can certainly get them for you if you'd like them. Uh, they are concentrating on um, flats above shops, as Councillor Jones says, uh, because that is one of the uh, problem areas we have, particularly for overcrowding. Um, I have been out in the past with enforcement officers. It is incredibly difficult. Uh, shopkeepers will say, oh, yes, well, the seven mattresses that are there, uh, they're actually just in storage, and all the clothes in the cupboard, they belong to me, and I stay overnight at the shop. It is incredibly difficult to actually prove these things. Uh, an offer has been made to, to Councillor Jones uh, by me, and, and indeed by officers as well, I believe, uh, to go out on visits with them. Uh, so far, I don't think she has taken up that offer. Uh, she may find it useful and interesting if she does. Supplementary by uh, um, Councillor MacDonald. I mean, can I just pick up on the Action Day point? Because this was raised, I think, back in June or July, so we're getting on for six months now. We were promised these Action Days, and you're saying you still don't have a date for them. So six months down the line, it's hardly action, I would have to say, on uh, the opposite member's part, really. And we would like to be kept informed about when these Action Days are taking place. We were promised, I think, back in June or July, six months ago, that we would be invited if we wanted to take part in those Action Days, and we've heard absolutely nothing since. So I don't see really much action here. 
Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Councillor McDonnell for her supplementary. Um, obviously, we've had the summer since then and holidays and whatever, so uh, that's probably why we weren't doing things uh, in uh, July and August. Um, as I have said in the answer, and as I just said verbally, uh, action days have taken place. They will be taking place. Uh, I note your request to be informed of when they are, uh, and I will ensure that you are informed. Question number 15, Councillor Hampton. Question number 15 for the candidate member. I thank uh, Councillor Hampton for the question. Uh, this, this is um, extremely uh, troubling news from the new regime uh, at City Hall. Um, it appears that uh, we are faced with a swinging cut to our crime prevention funding. Um, uh, in common with all London boroughs, we face huge uh, crime challenges, with the largest in the London, in the London borough, of course. Uh, but despite that, we have for many years been the safest in London borough. Uh, and it's no coincidence uh, that uh, one of the reasons that we are is because we have run a very, very effective crime prevention program. Uh, some of the activities are listed uh, here. Um, at risk uh, from this uh, proposed cut of 51% uh, are victims of domestic violence. Uh, family recovery, uh, prolific offenders uh, who we know are the most likely to go on and re-offend, um, our youth offending service, uh, a lot of community safety work in neighbourhoods. We know that all of these things are now at risk because of this proposed 51% cut from City Hall. Uh, it really is extremely um, troubling. Uh, I, have, uh, I have written to, and this runs counter, this runs counter to so much current thinking. Uh, we know that it makes an awful lot more sense to address vulnerabilities and to deal with problems before they happen rather than simply react to crimes once they have happened. Um, so to undermine a service which is all about crime prevention is, is little short of uh, crazy in my opinion. Um, it, is also, uh, running, it is also running absolutely counter to the, to the strongly held view that it's far better to let a borough, a local authority that knows what it's doing, get on with things rather than centralise powers uh, back to, in this case, City Hall. And it makes no sense whatsoever. We've tried to interrogate the process um, with, with very little, with very little uh, success. You're not interested, are you, in the answer? You really ought to be listening because it's your mayor, your mayor who has launched this. You should be listening. You should be listening. You should be listening. Can you just allow him to answer? Thank you. You should be listening. It's a grave threat to a lot of good work that has gone on in this borough. We have tried to, uh, tried to get some sort of sense of how it is that a very high performing borough like Wandsworth can uh, be faced with a 51% cut. Others with similar crime volumes to us. Others, others, why don't you listen? Why don't you listen? Uh, Others with similar crime volumes and similar crime characteristics to us face little or no face little or no need. There is no logic in that. No logic whatsoever. I have written to our assembly member. Uh, seeking assistance at the highest level in City Hall uh, in, uh, in, in really uh, trying to work out what on earth is going on here uh, and seeking support uh, for reversal of what appears already to be a decision uh, despite some indications initially it was a consultation but it seems already clear it's a decision. Councillor Hampton, supplementary. Supplementary. I do hope that the opposition can behave themselves. Anyway, as an active supporter of the Battersea summer scheme, behave yourself. Anyway, as... Can we just are you going to listen to me or not? I have afforded you the courtesy to listen to you. No, come on. Please, please, please. You won't be, you won't be invited to mince pies. Discourtesy in this chamber is not acceptable. Anyway, are you going to allow but me please. to speak? Rudeness, not please. acceptable. I will carry can you, on can, and speak can you allow over you. You are rude. Be talking. I think your whip should do Could something please, about this. I have never. Could you please let her speak? Thank you. I, I ask just let her speak. Thank just you. Just a minute. I will speak. I do think the councillor. Could, could you just speaking. please let her speak? It is my turn to speak, not yours. Anyway, I go back to the point that as an active supporter of the Battersea Summer Scheme and all the tremendous work that they do, I have seen at first hand what the money will do. 
Now I see that Councillor Cooper is here. Perhaps we should actually ask her what she is going to say to the Mayor about this. But what I would like to know, and it's a very simple question, not a speech, is what the timeline will be for her response, because I would like it to be sooner rather than later. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you, Councillor Hampton, for the supplementary question. Oh. Okay. Isn't, it, isn't it a shame that the party opposite can't do us the courtesy of just listening to responses? Instead, if you don't like what you hear, you just all start shouting. Councillor Gibbons, please. You're doing it again, Councillor Gibbons. If nothing else is extremely rude, but we have a point of view, and this is incredibly important for this borough. It's incredible. I have. I have. At no point, Mr. Mayor. at no point in anything I have said in the last few minutes have I been rude to anybody. I have just tried, and you have tried to shout me down. Please. If it goes on, we will have to adjourn. I just wanted to be quiet so we can have a civilised discussion. Thank you. That, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So to return to uh, Councillor Hampton's supplementary question. Uh, yes, I wrote to our Assembly member, uh, member uh, of course, uh, also uh, uh, Councillor here, uh, Leonie Cooper, last week. Uh, I haven't yet had a reply, um, though we did have a very brief exchange uh, last night at the uh, Safer Neighbourhood Board. Um, I do look forward to support and the, uh, the borough's case being put to the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor for Policing and Crime, Sophie Linden, with the utmost vigour. Uh, and I look forward to any sort of rational explanation, because I certainly can't see it. Uh, the Leader can't see it. The Leader's been involved in, uh, in the London uh, Council's Leaders Committee. Uh, our Chief Executive, uh, uh, my request is also, uh, through uh, committees he's involved in, uh, try to find out what the rationale behind this extraordinary 51% cut uh, could possibly be. Uh, and none of us can make any sense whatsoever. It seems bizarre. It's, uh, it's of the gravest, uh, the gravest import in terms of its potential impact on our crime prevention work. And the only logic of where it might lead us is that crime levels could well go up. Because we all know, as I said, that if you can get in early and you can work with vulnerable people in vulnerable communities, which we have done with great success and we're doing ever more of, and we talk to the borough commander about it the whole time, if we don't have the money to do it, then it's difficult to see how that can have a good outcome. Su supplementary, Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm sorry that this discussion has uh, become somewhat fractious because this is actually um, a very serious uh, situation. And I'm sorry that I didn't respond in writing to you, Councillor Cook. Um, I took the first opportunity I could. And, uh, in fact, I'd already accepted other engagements, which is why I couldn't stay at last night's meeting. Um, but I actually wanted to come and say to you in person at that meeting, um, I've actually had a change of staff, which is why you didn't get a, a written response. Is it a question? Yes. There is a question. Um, I, I, if you don't mind, a little indulgence in the lead up to the question, just because we have been talking about this and a lot of people have made some points. I'm sorry, Mr. Merritt, it's a slightly long leading, longer than usual. And I hope that Councillor Hampton will also accept that that's why I've not written back to Councillor Cook. I am seeking a meeting with, uh, or a discussion with uh, Sophie Linden as a matter of urgency. And does the cabinet cabinet member accept that I will be doing everything that I can to um, promote uh, the situation of keeping as much money in this borough and for this borough as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, um, Cooper, for the answer. And that's, that's reassuring. Of course I accept that. That's what you tell me. Uh, very, uh, very interested to see the outcome of it. Uh, and uh, anything I can do uh, to help with that dialogue with Sophie Linden, I'm very willing to do at a moment's notice because uh, I can hardly think of anything more important in terms of crime prevention in this borough. Uh, I'm determined we remain the safest in a London borough. Thank you.